Live from the JSA Podcast Studio, presenting Data Movers, showcasing the leaders behind the headlines in the telecom and data center infrastructure industry. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Data Movers. I'm your host, Jamie Scott Okataya, founder and CEO of JSA. Along with my fabulous co-host, Mr. Evan Christel, top B2B social media influencer. Hey, Evan. Hey, Jamie, and hey, everyone. Welcome to Data Movers, where we sit down with the most influential men and women in today's data center and telco world, supporting the infrastructure requirements of uh, this new normal. Hey, Jamie, so how was your Labor Day? It was really amazing. We definitely did staycation style Labor Day weekend. You know, we uh, got, to, got to go to some outdoor restaurants in our neighborhood and uh, look, look at the beach sunset. It was nice. It was really nice. nice. But how about you? I think I saw on your, your, uh, on your feed, you were making the most of Boston. Yeah, you know, museums are back open again. And it's, I, I, I love to get out and explore. Uh, we have a tremendous art scene here. And uh, after Labor Day, though, is tr traditionally when we really get back to work and our industry goes into high gear, the conference season begins, everyone's focused on business, but this, this feels a little different. <laughs> How about you? Yeah, it's, you know, the whole year is almost thrown off because ITW happens later. So we all just got back from ITW for those of the locals that, that participated on site. Uh, and we're all a little dubious, I would say. Is that, do people still say that word, dubious? I'm dubious in general, but specifically dubious about events. I have like four invitations to events, and I'm just pretty uncertain about my uh, desire and inclination to, to go running around the world at events. So let's stick to virtual for a while. Speaking of virtual, we have a great guest today. Yeah, you, you know it. I'm really excited to just go ahead and dive right in here. Um, today, we have... Scott Willis, President CEO of Dart Points. Scott, welcome to Data Movers. Yeah, Jamie, thank you, Evan. Thank you, and certainly uh, appreciated the opportunity to sit down and, and visit with you a little bit uh, about Dart Points, about the industry, and, and talk about, just, just like you guys shared, what's, uh, what's going on in our industry and, and looking forward to the opportunity. Well, welcome, Scott. Really nice to connect and meet you. And I was just looking at your LinkedIn bio, Scott, before I joined. And you, you have worked for both Nokia and Ericsson in prior lives. And I was really intrigued by that. What, what was it that was so attractive about Scandinavia? <laughs> you know, listen, so those were, those were, first of all, let me start with, those are, those are world-class companies. Both of those organizations, I, uh, I absolutely appreciated the opportunity to, to be a part of. Um, the time I was there was, was really a, an emerging time uh, within within our industry, and so when I think about the the uh, the, the twelve or, or thirteen or fourteen years or so that I was I was between those two organizations, um, I couldn't have been thrilled about the opportunity they gave me. We uh, we uh, we accomplished a lot, and I, I think contributed a lot at the industry level, uh, in particularly here in in North America. And uh, I valued I valued my time and the and the people and, and the organizations that uh, that I was able to develop my career within. Yeah, it's uh, what an, an amazing um, uh, places to start and and uh, and grow your resume, which is incredible. Um, and it kind of leads us all the way up to today. Uh, there's so much amazing headlines going going on. Um, just recently, um, there was a Senate passing, of course, of that infrastructure bill, which places really a, a significant emphasis on on broadband accessibility. And you know, when you think of accessibility and digital equity, what do you see as the next steps that industry leaders need to take to make this a reality? And, and particularly, how does dark points play a role in bridging that digital divide? Yeah, I know, Jamie. I mean, I, I think that's a great question, and I think it's a I think it's a great topic. L listen, I um, um, I'll, I'll I'll date myself a little bit, but I you know I started in this industry back in in the mid '80s, and and I, I I started it with a purpose, and and you know to your question, um, you know this is a this is a topic that that it goes back as far as I can remember in terms of uh, from a from a government led perspective the need to to um, bring broadband capability out to rural communities. Um, 
And so it's a topic that's been around for about 30 or 35 plus years since I've been in this industry. But I think this one feels different. Um, uh, and it's important that it's different. Uh, you know, we're, we're on the verge of, of um, really pivoting to, to uh, where our industry is moving next, um, uh, not only generationally, right? The tailwinds of that and, and the buzzword that everybody talks about is 5G. And there's no, there's no underestimating the, the, the tailwind strength of that. But, but we're, at one of those, we're, we're at one of those pivot points where if we don't address this uh, as an industry, we're really gonna run the risk of really leaving the rural communities even further behind. And so, so my, my hope is, is it's not a new topic. Um, my sense is it feels different this time. Um, as I'm out uh, and, and I'm talking with prospective customers and we're talking to a lot of fiber providers, um, uh, whether that's local, um, whether that's regional or whether that's national, this time it, it feels real. I am, I am seeing steps where uh, investment is really beginning to take place and they're leveraging uh, the funds that are available at the government level. So, so that's one. I hope this is the one that's going to enable it because it's critical that as we talk about um, the future applications that really 5G is going to enable, we need to be able to bring those applications both to tier one, you know, dense communities where, where there's, there's hubs of center of influence where a lot of people live, and we need to be able to bring that same experience out to the rural communities and give those communities opportunities to attract uh, organizations uh, from an economic development perspective, which is really what this is all about. And that plays into our second piece. Um, when you think about rural broadband, um, the, the first piece of that is we're, we're a player in that, but we're not an enabler in that per se, right? That's really the fiber providers that are going to get uh, that are going to get out there and and deploy the fiber. Whether it's a wireless app application that enables the rural broadband, or it's a physical fiber application that does it, that's an important piece. Where Dart Points comes in is we're the second equation to that that I talked about. That's really bringing out the digital infrastructure that's going to bring content. It's going to allow. Um, whether it's, it's a, an individual or a, a private enterprise and organization that makes a, a, a digital request, we're going to be able to enable that in rural environments, underserved communities, which is how we tend to coin it. And we're going to be able to process, we're going to be able to compute, and we're going to be able to store that, that request on a very local level. And so when you think about that from, from economic terms, and, and, it, and, and you're, you're in some of these underserved communities, you're now able to compete in a very cost-effective way and on the same level of performance as, as organizations, whether, whether you're a private individual or you're a private enterprise that, that is in Chicago or Dallas or, or New York or LA, which are, which are some of our primary hubs from, from a digital infrastructure perspective. So we're excited about that. And that's the role that Dart Points is gonna play. It's, it's really about enabling those types of solutions uh, into communities that, that, um, that, that in many cases have that capability today. It's just an inferior capability and it's at a higher cost point. So that's, 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 where, that's the way we look at, at rural broadband. And that's why we're excited about it. And, and um, in my sense is we're, we're at a different stage as an industry. And, and I see things happening that's going to address that. So I'm a, I'm a total tech geek. And I was just watching a video before our call on this high density two phase liquid immersion cooling technology that you've just deployed at all of your data centers across the portfolio. It's like something from uh, Star Trek, but it's actually real and here today. So give us a little background on this tech and why it's so groundbreaking for both, you know, enterprises and providers. Yeah. So listen, uh, Evan, thank you for the question. We're, we're, we're excited about this opportunity. I mean, we, we, we pride ourselves, I, I think, as an organization in innovation, right? We are at, at, at the very core of what we're doing. We're, we're enabling um, uh, technologies uh, in a very, very different way and in, and in markets that, um, that, that really need it, that don't have it today. This is an extension of that, right? It, it's really, it's, um, it, it's really I, I look at it from uh, 
two perspectives. So le, le, from the fundamental perspective, um, it's, it's really about, um, it, it's about enabling that capability, right? That high dense, high compute. So when you think about uh, the, the use cases, you can, you can pick it, Te telemedicine, whether you think about telehealth, whether you think about artificial intelligence, gaming, um, autonomous vehicles, um, uh, uh, robotics around around manufacturing. I, the list goes on and on. We all hear all of these 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 use cases and these applications that 5G is is again. When I talk about that tailwind, that's going to enable. Um, this is Dart Points's uh, participation in enabling that. Right. These are many of those applications re require highly dense environments that can deliver highly compute requirements and do it in a cost-effective and, and efficient way. And so when you think about um, our footprint and, and what we're actually deploying from a digital infrastructure perspective, um, I referenced earlier about those underserved communities. And, and as we target that sector of the market and really bring that capability uh, into, into those underserved markets, delivering this in a footprint that we're we're attempting to deliver to, to deliver is a is a is a unique uh, is a unique challenge and it's a unique opportunity and that's what this this uh, liquid immersion technology is all about. It's about delivering the power of dense computing in a in a smaller footprint, which is what we're deploying. We're not deploying big, large, multiple megawatt data centers in these communities, right? We're deploying that capability in a much smaller footprint. So the opportunity to bring again that same type of, of solution, that same type of, of um, compute capability into these markets and do it in a way that's cost effective um, and is efficient is something we're, we're excited about. And then, and then it, it also has uh, the second piece of that. It also has an element of, of, um, of green initiatives that's really built around it, right? I mean, you're talking about a technology that 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 requires the fraction of power, right? That requires the fraction of all of the equipment that supports a dense air-cooled environment. We're able to deliver all that in a much smaller footprint, in a much more um, uh, um, uh, controlled power demand environment, and deliver the same capability into those markets. And so, those are the two drivers, and that's what we're excited about. So we're uh, we're in the process of, of finalizing that deployment across our, our portfolio today, and we're excited about um, uh, where where our pipeline is is taking us in terms of the conversations we're having with prospective customers. And so we're we're a we're a firm believer that we've got something fairly unique here that we think is going to deliver and really support the overall vision of what we're trying to do within Dark Points. Yeah, very unique and and uh, so necessary, so innovative. Uh, really, the future is how I see it. Um, and and it's funny how you know and you, you're talking about this tailspin five G, uh, but I would say COVID too has has forced an explosive demand on data delivery and, and how are we doing this and and what are the new challenges that uh, it, we're facing as an industry. Um, and, and really, you know, how critical that, that need for reliable connectivity. We were talking about, um, uh, you know, rural broadband earlier. Um, can, could you advise us, like, what actionable insights do you, do you advise for, for enterprises and providers who really want to harness, well, the power of edge? What can we do? Yeah, listen, th this is, to me, this is all about, um, from an enterprise perspective, it's all about um, competitiveness. It's all about um, it's all about, um, uh, and that's both you know cost wise as well as performance. And it's about enabling whether it's internal workloads, okay, or it's external applications that are supporting your customer. It's all about enabling that at the at the furthest point of where that demand is being driven. And so you you talked about let's let's talk about the the internal demand first, right? Um, and then we'll 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 talk about the the customer use cases. Um, you talked about COVID, right? We're an example of it, right? Um, I'm sitting here in Dallas. You're sitting there in on the West Coast in California. Evan, you're sitting on the East Coast up in up in Boston. Um, and uh, we're in our own environments, right? And and listen, do do I 
do I think that we're in a stage of, of, um, of, of settling in of what our work environment is going to be? No question, right? We're, it's something we struggle with every day. It's something we talk with our employees about. We ask for feedback in terms of, of making sure that we understand how they want to work, where they want to work, um, how can they be efficient, right? How can they be productive, right? Those are ongoing challenges. But the environment we're in is not going away, right? The, the, we're, we're not all going to go back one day and, and COVID snaps and, and it's behind us and we're all sitting in dense offices anymore. That, that is not going to happen or I don't believe it's going to happen. Um, and so there's no doubt that um, uh, from an employee perspective, um, this has accelerated the model that we're talking about. So as a, as a company um, is looking internally, right? And it's number one asset, which is its employees and, and trying to figure out how do they retain those employees, right? How do they, how do they deliver um, an environment where they can have the, the life balance that they're looking for? They can be, they can be efficient. They can, they can be productive, right? All of those tools. The ability to push that out at the edge where those employees exist, right? Wherever they choose to exist is going to be critical. And so regardless of the internal workload as an enterprise that you're looking at, this is about delivering in a cost-effective, high-performing way, those solutions at the edge. So that's that's the internal piece from an enterprise perspective. Um, the external piece is is clearly um, it's all about delivering uh, whatever applications that an enterprise is looking to deliver to meet and serve the needs of their customers. That's what this is all about. I mean, if you look historically backwards in our industry, most organizations had to plant themselves around, I've already mentioned it, it's the major hubs in our industry, it's Dallas, it's Chicago, it's New York, it's LA, right? You get into some of the secondary markets of Atlanta, right? Certainly, let me, let me add Northern Virginia, that's a critical one for, for, uh, for the tier one market. Generally, when you look at the architecture, right, and how our, our, at an industry level, we distribute data today, it's in a very concentrated environment. And so for enterprises to harness the, 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 the capability and optimize the capability of that, they needed to, they needed to put themselves in, in proximity to those locations. Well, that changes now, right? As Dart Point comes out and we start deploying digital infrastructure in a much more distributed way, in a way where it's, it's meeting the needs of these underserved communities, enterprises now can drive workloads and applications to the point of where their customers need it. And, and that's, the, that's the full benefit of how enterprises should be looking at, at what, what, a, what a dark point solutions uh, delivers into the market. And that's what they should be excited about because it's going, to, it's going to increase their competitiveness, it's going to lower their cost, and it's going to improve both their internal as well as their external customer engagements as they, as they look to, to operate and optimize their business. Fantastic. Uh, so Scott, you've had a very uh, long and storied uh, career in our industry, uh, to say the least, which is a nice way of saying you're old. But, <laughs> but I'm, okay. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Me, me too. Me too. I'm, I'm getting comfortable with that idea. But, right. but tell, tell us about your journey to dark points. I mean, how did you come to the company and give us some insights into some of the recent acquisitions that you've uh, made? Yeah, yeah. Listen, I, 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 you'll, you'll see. I, I, I will admit, I'm, I, I am older, but, but you can, you can see, I, I equally as have as much passion today as I did when I was younger. <laughs> I, I love, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't accidentally enter, enter this industry, right? I, uh, I, I, I sought this industry out when I, when I came out of school, and um, this is, I, I just, I, I think we are so blessed and so fortunate to be part of, of, the, of the industry that, that we're in. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's an industry that, uh, you know, from my perspective, um, it, it's hard to, to, and when I say industry, I'm talking about our collective industry. It's hard to point, there's certainly other industries that you can, but it's hard to point to one that has had um, more of a, a global impact on society than the communications industry. And I mean that collectively, when you think about where we were you know, when I came out of when I came out of school, 
my roommate. Uh, he was a computer science, uh, you know, undergraduate, and he had a, you know, he had a a, a Commodore sixty four computer that that largely we played games on. And most most people that are listening to this probably aren't even going to know what that is. Oh, it's but, classic. You know, it, it is classic. And uh, you know, my my introduction to communications at that time was was I had a I had a class right on on campus, and I had to I literally did the did the coding in my room and, and sent it across a, a telephone line to a central vax on, on campus and printed it out and took it to class. That was my introduction to, uh, oh, you are, you are old. Jeez. I am, I am very much dating myself. So, <laughs> you know, when I, when I think about that, it, I'm, I'm just thrilled to be a part of that because there's, we, we as an industry have had such an impact on, on people's lives in terms of just, just overall improving, uh, you know, the, the way people live and, and, uh, society in general. So that that's one. And then, you know, too, listen, I, I, um, uh, I, I, I kind of look at my career in three stages, right? You know, me being in the, in, in the third stage. I mean, I, you know, if I look at kind of my early days, it was really on the, on a carrier side, right? And it was about, it was about uh, telecommunications. Uh, I Sprint uh, just about, uh, just under about 10 years at Sprint, which is, which is where I started. And that was all about deploying fiber. That was all about deploying a long distance network. Right where we competed with MCI and AT and T and and uh, WorldCom and and others. Right, that's that was kind of the first stage. Um, the second stage um, uh, was was really about uh, some of the companies that you mentioned, and that's really where I where I I, I transitioned from there into the wireless you know sector, um, and had a great opportunity to to really participate. I, I think at a high level and and contribute. Um, in the deployment of that side, I, I started out back when uh, you know when when you know I was with Nokia and they didn't really have much presence in North America and Singular was really the driver and they were they were going from uh, TDMA to GSM and really kind of their first deployment of 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 2G and uh, you know and I, I I rode that all the way through uh, those years with Nokia and Ericsson where where I finished up with with 4G so. Had a had a a great opportunity from the wireless side to have a, a a real impact there and really build out some some what uh, what what is what is what is going to be the foundation for what we're ultimately going to realize uh, economically from from the from the full deployment of five G today and I, I feel good about participating in that. So when I came out of that process, um, it was really about you know I, I as you said I'm I'm older and and you start you know you start reflecting and. I certainly have more years behind me professionally than I've got in front of me, and so you start thinking about, you know, what do you want to do, and and that's really where, um, you know, the idea um, incubated, right? I uh, I uh, I got introduced uh, through some some colleagues that I'd had some some past relationships with into Astra Capital. Astra Capital is our is the private equity firm that uh, that uh, that owns Starpoints, uh, and we really built the investment thesis around um, this emerging market around edge uh, is the industry was was really uh, at a stage where this very centralized dense distribution model was not sustainable right as you look at as you look at um, data growth trajectory that's been happening for years in in our industry when you look at all of these future applications that um, that are a little more you know latency sensitive um, when you take a look at the true, economic benefit that 5g is going to deliver our economy right none of that none of that's going to be realized unless that digital infrastructure um, uh, architecture and fabric is what i like to call it is deployed right that's the first enabler that allows all of that to be achieved and so that's really what dark points is all about it's about understanding what's going on in our industry it's understanding where we are pivoting uh, uh, from from a, a very centralized distribution model. When I talk about distribution, I'm talking about digital distribution um, into a, a much more distributed environment. And it's bringing use cases and applications out to the edge where customers demand that. And, and it can be, it can, we can deliver compute, we can process it and we can store it at the edge and deliver that same experience at the edge that we get in some of these, some of these more centralized markets. So that's what that's what the dark points business model is all about. Um, and so when I when I think about my um, my career and I think about um, what I wanted to do next, um, 
it, it's not a it's not a far stretch, right? It's in a different part of our industry, right? It's it's you know, am I connected into the wireless sector? Yes. Am I directly connected? No. Uh, but there there's certainly um, uh, uh, correlations. Um, probably the biggest connection you can draw from is is it's it's about deployment, right? And it's about enabling next generation technology. And I've certainly done a lot of that. Um, and most recently, if you want to look at the last decade or decade, decade and a half in the wireless side, that was about enabling um, uh, early on 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 cell sites and building tel uh, cell towers and putting technology on cell towers. The latter part certainly involved some 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 small cells and in building deployment. So data center isn't a far cry uh, from that, right? It is about deployment. It is about enabling an architecture layer that will that will create a new business model and will allow us to, to deliver um, use cases and applications um, and the ability uh, to, to take advantage of the technology that is, is an industry that we're deploying. And so that's the way I think about it. So this is where I'm gonna spend you know, kind of that that uh, that third, you know, that that, that kind of third, uh, you know, if I break my career into into three pieces, that third piece, and I'm I'm excited about it. It's uh, it's one when I when I draw back upon what we previously said that kind of drove me into this industry. This is one that really feeds into that, and it's it's about enabling uh, a, a digital fabric that's just going to change the way that that we as users, whether you're an individual user sitting in your home or whether you're an, inter, uh, an enterprise um, uh, user driving applications down to your customer, it's going to dramatically change how we do business. And that's that's what I'm excited about. And, and tell, us, tell, tell us about, uh, if I could, you, you recently acquired Medion uh, and Metro data centers. How did those support your vision and, and go to market? Yeah, that's a that's an important part of, uh, that's an important piece of the strategy, right? When I talked about the original investment thesis, it was it was built on on really two pieces. It was built on deployment where we're physically going out and we're identifying markets where we have need, where we see demand. We're going to deploy um, physical data centers. The other piece of it is is um, is uh, is is acquisition. It's looking um, the way we think about acquisitions at dark points uh, is is we've we've done quite a bit of, of data analytics or data modeling in terms of trying to determine where we feel we see need um, in, in the market, in particular in the, in the US, uh, uh, domestic US market, which is, where we're, which is where we're focused today. If we identify an acquisition candidate that also uh, matches down with the markets where we, see, where we see need, that becomes an acquisition candidate, right? It accelerates us into a market um, it accelerates us uh, from a scale perspective, um, and it gives us a, a customer base that we can build around and we can, we can deploy quickly on top of the environment that they've already created and really develop a hub and spoke strategy as you think about bringing interconnect and peering into those underserved markets. Acquisitions gives us the footprint and the scale to be able to create that in a in a more accelerated way than if we tried to build it directly ourselves, and that's how we think about it. So we're excited about uh, our first acquisition, which was Dart Points. We did that uh, we did that um, uh, in uh, in March of, of 2020. That was the platform, uh, and then uh, in October of last year, we we uh, we acquired uh, Metro uh, Data Centers. Uh, we call it internally MDC. Um, and then we've recently uh, acquired uh, a Midian, which we're, we're really excited about. So today we're, we're targeted really in a Southeast, Mid-Atlantic, Midwest, and Southwest footprint. And what does that mean? That's about 32 of the 50 states, at least initially. Um, if you look out West and you look up to the Northeast, it's not that there's not demand, but those are, those are, those are a little more competitive. And we feel like we can generate and demonstrate scale within that, that initial four uh, region footprint. And so that's how we think about um, targeting uh, acquisition candidates. So we're, we're excited about it. Uh, it's, uh, it's, um, it's, you're, you're at an emerging stage within our industry. So having enough scale to be able to go out and talk to content and CDN providers is important, right? Because one or two sites doesn't get them excited. Right um, today, we're 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 eleven sites in five markets, um, and I I 
I, I don't see an environment where, where our deployment strategy as well as our acquisition strategy is going to slow down. And we want, you know, Dart Points is all about um, uh, enabling the solution that I've talked about. And we want to be a market leader. And like everything else in our industry, it's, it, it, timing is important, right? And being able to deliver that digital fabric in a scalable way is important if you want to be as successful and you want to be a leader in this industry. And we're very focused on that. And so that's, that's how we think about uh, acquisitions and that's how we think about the market. And that's how we think about as we deploy our own data center. So we're, uh, we're, we're excited about that opportunity to, to continue to, to execute on that vision. Oh, it's great vision. Uh, and uh, you certainly have the team in place to uh, to make it happen. Very exciting time for you. And you know, last question before we get to the rapid fire section, which I know our listeners love. <laughs> um, but you know, clearly you're a global leader in in our communications industry. Do you have any senior level uh, advice for leaders and executives like yourself who are really leading teams to success? Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I, I've got, you know, we could, we could take a lot of time on, on advice, but I, you know, I, I um, you know, listen, here's something that I, I say regularly, those that know me, uh, those that work with me, and, and uh, you know, you could, you, could, you, you could certainly talk to my daughter and she'd, she'd tell you I've repeated this, be, be, uh, be, be purpose-driven in, in what you do, because when you're purpose-driven, um, everything else falls into place, whether you're talking about passion you know, whether you're talking about, you know, the, the, the courage to take risk, um, whether you're talking about, um, um, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, being that, that leader that, 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 that people are drawn to, that people want to work for, that people want to, to come in and, and join what it is you're wanting to do and, and bring that into the market. If, if, if you, if you're, if you're purpose-driven, all the other things, you know, fall into place. And I've tried to be that. And I, I talked a little bit about, um, uh, you know, why I got into this industry. And it was really about being part of something that was greater than the industry and really impacting society in a, in a different way. And that's, that's, where, that's where mine comes from. And that's what, you know, it's, it's about being, uh, you know, purpose-driven in, in everything you do. And, and uh, listen, I, like I said, I've, I've said this to my daughter and others many times, it, you know, life is a journey and your professional career is a journey, right? It's, it's, you've got to look at it that way. And, and that can be a, a very satisfying journey um, or it can be a, a very, you know, unsatisfying journey. And if, to me, the, the lesson that I've learned and, and what I would share with others is, is if you're purpose-driven, you're, you're well down the path of, of that being a, a very successful and satisfactory driven journey. And, and uh, you know, to me, that's, that's, that's part of what, what it's all about. We spend, a, we spend a lot of time at work and we spend a lot of time at what we do. So you might as well, you might as well have a purpose behind what you're, what you're doing that, that drives you every day. Love that. I, I wrote it all down for, for my team call in, in two hours from now. I just <laughs> <Good deal. laughs> yeah. All right. So now we're on to our rapid fire section. So we're going to uh, just give you some quick, fast uh, questions and go ahead and say whatever comes to mind first. Yeah, 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 I have to. This is, this is fun for me, too. I'm yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. So what, what's the favorite way to start your day, Scott? What's your oh, that, that's uh, that, that's easy. So I, I start out quickly. I'm, I'm, I'm like a lot of the people I'm, a, I'm addicted to, to, to a cup of coffee. And then I, I love to uh, I love to jump on my Peloton and uh, start my day with that. I uh, to me, it's part of the industry that we're talking about some of the use cases. I, I, I love Peloton. I love all the data coming at me. And so that's the way I like to start my day. Awesome. My Peloton holds my clothes a lot of times more than <laughs> it holds me. There you, there you go. It, it, it's the, it serves multiple purposes, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. And when travel is back to being a thing, favorite place to travel? Uh, mine, mine's always, always the, uh, always the mountains. I, I love to, I love to ski in the winter, and and I love the the outdoors in the summer. So if you pick a, uh, pick a favorite place to me, if it's if it's got if it's got mountains, I'm all in. And uh, are you an early bird or a night owl? Oh no, I'm I'm definitely an early bird. I I uh, I'm I'm out fairly early at uh, at night, so I I'm I'm definitely uh, more of a morning morning person. That's uh, I've always been that way. I don't know why, but that's that's uh, that's how that's how it's worked for me. 
And what sport uh, were you involved with in high school? I'm going to guess captain of the football team kind of thing. But, uh, okay, so uh, you're, close, what, 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 you're, you're close. Yeah, I uh, listen. I was very active in, in all all sports growing up. But I, uh, you're you're dead on. My my, we we've talked about passion a couple of times. I love football. I started when I was seven. I started. See, when I, was I knew it. Dallas yeah. and uh, and uh, Friday I Night Lights. Well, that's it. <laughs> exactly <laughs> right. Right here in Texas, home home of Friday Night Lights. So uh, yeah, I, I loved playing that all the way through high school. All right, so I got to ask, what was your favorite car? Like I'm I'm watching you in this like football uniform. What were you driving? Uh, so my first, so my my first car, yeah. So you're going way back. So it was a 1968 Ford uh f100 short bed was uh was my was my first car it actually had a a, a three-speed shift on the column so that that you're going way back but that was my very first vehicle and who, who's your inspiration and and why yeah so listen i i've uh like like so many i've been blessed i mean i've had so many mentors i've had so many people throughout my career that uh that have influenced me but certainly certainly today it's uh i, I would i would point to my son so he's uh He's not uh, he's not as advantaged as uh, as a lot of children today. And just when you when you look at him and the amount of courage and uh, the way that uh, that he doesn't even know it and the way he approaches life every day is uh, is very inspiring to me. So it's it's something that I draw. I draw a lot on personally. Oh, wow. I'm not I'm not crying. Don't worry. <laughs> um, but but yeah, thanks so much, Scott, for uh, for joining us. It really was interesting to learn how. Closing the digital divide is a lot more than fiber and, you know, base stations. It's about the whole network. And uh, congratulations on all the success onwards and upwards. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So, I, uh, Evan, listen, I've enjoyed the conversation. I appreciate the time and and uh, follow us on our journey. So uh, I know I know Jamie and her team will. So they're doing a great job uh, uh, helping us along the way, and uh, I, uh, I'm excited about uh, the uh, the opportunities in front of us in the future for Dart Points. Yeah. We are so appreciative of you and your team, and uh, you really are uh, impacting society. Uh, talk about purpose driven. You're delivering on, on that purpose, and and we appreciate you. Uh, thank you, Scott. Thank you, Evan. And guys, if you've enjoyed today's Data Movers podcast, as I did, please go ahead and check us out, jsa.net slash podcast for upcoming Data Movers episodes. We release every other week on Wednesdays, so go ahead and listen in. Um, and uh, Evan? Yeah, follow us on Twitter, uh, Jay Scotto and at Evan Kerstell. We'll continue the conversation. Thanks, everyone. And as always, guys, stay safe and happy networking. <laughs>